welcome back to Chicanic. I hope everybody's having a great Memorial Day weekend as we remember the men and women that fought for our country and our freedoms. So I'm sure a bunch of you went out and tried to get all your yard work done before this weekend so you could relax, but there's nothing worse than going out and trying to weed eat and it either A, being hard to start, B, starting and dying, or C, running on choke. The most common trimmers that I see come into my shop is the Husqvarna 128LD and the Steels. Um, the biggest problem we see with the Husqvarna is that it does one of those three things. So today I'm going to show you how to diagnose your problem and how to fix it in about 10 minutes. For this project, there are a few things you're going to need. You're going to need some new fuel line with uh, 3 30 seconds inside diameter, 3 16 outside diameter. You're going to want to have something to pull your fuel lines in through your tank. I have these handy dandy he hemos that you can get offline for about $5.88. You're gonna want a spark plug tool. You're gonna want an eight millimeter socket, some needle nose pliers, probably a plug to replace and a fuel filter to replace. Depending on how bad the carburetor is when we get inside of it, you might want to replace the entire carburetor. I highly recommend getting OEM, original manufacturer parts for this. Um, the aftermarket ones you can get for about $12 online, but about 70% of the time they do not run as well and have to be adjusted right off the bat, which is not a good sign. Um, the part number for the carburetor on this is 545-081848. If you get inside and your carburetor is not that bad and you think you want to try to kit it, it is a RB29 Zama kit. First off, we're going to remove the plug. When removing the plug, a lot of times you're going to want to look at it and see if the machine is burning too lean or too rich. That is a nasty plug. You can tell from the grayness though that it has not been getting the gas that it needs. Next, we're gonna check compression and make sure that it's worth working on. At home, you probably won't be able to do this, so you might wanna look down inside the cylinder. If you see that it's still shiny or has its cross thatchings going left and right, that's a really good sign. If you see any lines going up and down, it means that it's scored and you probably don't wanna work on it. After checking compression, we have 130 pounds of compression, which is still really good for this machine. Anything below 100 pounds you don't want to work on, it doesn't have enough compression to run, run correctly. So when my customer brought this trimmer in, they said that it would only run on choke. So the first thing we're going to do at next is check their fuel and make sure that it's fresh and has no water in it. But unfortunately, they were trying to run it on water. So next, we're gonna dump the gas. Oh, there went the fuel filter. So at this point, I know we have more issues than just the water in the gas. With the fuel filter falling off, it has sucked trash up into the carburetor and probably worn out the diaphragms. We're gonna open it up and check it out and see. A lot of times, if you can get your fuel line, next we're going to remove the air filter cover, take the nasty air filter out. It has two eight millimeter nuts that we're going to need to remove to get the air filter base off. Move the choke lever over so you can get the air filter base off. Now we're to the carburetor. So we know the fuel line is rotten or the fuel filter would not have fallen off. So we're gonna go ahead and remove the carburetor. To remove the carburetor, you're gonna to have to do something with the fuel lines, either cut them or I use my Hemos here. Inside there's little connectors that hold the fuel lines in place. If you pull them out, it's easier to pull your fuel line out through the top. Oop. 
Then you can remove the uh, carburetor. Now we're going to take our throttle cable off like that. Now you have the carburetor off. Once you have your carburetor off, get a flashlight and look up inside of your cylinder at your piston. If it has any up and down scratches, you probably do not want to keep continuing on because you don't want to work on a dead machine. But if it looks smooth and everything looks shiny, you're probably good to go. So at this point, I'm pretty sure what we're going to find inside, but we're going to go ahead and open it up and see what has caught in the screen. So even with fresh gas in here, this trimmer probably would have never run. So if you look inside that screen there, that is a bunch of goo that would make it not want to run because it's starving for gas. That's not good. We're gonna look at the diaphragms inside. You can see that from it starving for fuel and trying to suck so hard, it has made the diaphragms uh, suck in. So they need to be replaced. There's a bunch of debris up inside here. So yeah, it sucked a lot of trash up with that fuel filter not on it. Also, you can tell the fuel line was starting to deteriorate itself and uh, broke off the end there. But So we know that the carburetor is in bad shape. I'm going to make another video on how to put kits into carburetors, but for today, we're just going to go ahead and replace. With your carburetor comes a new mounting gasket. First, we're going to have to put in our fuel lines and our fuel filter. You have two lines going to the carburetor. One draws the fuel in, goes through the primer bulb, and the other one is your return. So the one that is the return is only going to stub into the tank, so it doesn't have to be as long. The other one needs to be able to lay in the bottom of the tank with the fuel filter. So for the fuel filter line, and because I'm going to have to cut off a large chunk of it to get it down in there and uh, uh, pull it with my needle nose pliers, we're going to probably want to cut off about, I'd say seven inches or so. For the return line, you're gonna still need some that you're gonna to wanna to be able to pull on that you're gonna cut sideways. I'm gonna show you how to do that here in a second. What's gonna stick out of the tank, what you're gonna cut off sideways, and it's just gonna stub in the tank. You could probably go with about four inches on this one. You wanna start with the line going to your fuel filter first because it's farthest away from your gas tank hole that we're going to be working through and so you don't want to have to fight around the other line to get to this one next so first we're going to cut the line down the center and we're going to sort of make it at a point at the end now depending on what kind of tool you have the needle nose pliers to get in through the gas tank hole you're going to probably have to cut it longer now i have those hemos that are awesome so I don't have to do it too much. Now, this one you're gonna stick in the hole farthest away from the gas tank, uh, uh, gas fuel lid. Once you have the part that you cut in there, you can go inside your gas tank and start pulling it through. Once you've pulled it through, we're going to pull it back out of the gas cap hole. We're gonna cut off that chunk that we cut sideways. I'm going to stretch out the end just a little bit, make it easier to get our fuel filter on. We're gonna slide the fuel filter on all the way and we're gonna lay that in the bottom of the tank. Next, we're going to do the same thing to the return line. We're going to cut it sideways down the center. 
Make it into a little point so it's easier to get into your gas tank. You're going to put it in the hole that's closest to your fuel cap. And then we're just going to snug it in just a little bit. And that one just barely has to be stuck in there. So um, next we're going to put the carburetor back on first with the new gasket. Now we're going to reinstall the carburetor. We're going to put the line going from the fuel filter to the nipple farthest away from the primer bulb and your return line, the short one that just stubs in the tank, goes to the one closest to your primer bulb. Now when you put it back on, there is a slot where your throttle wire bracket needs to be put on. Once you're to this point, you're going to want to uh, replace your throttle cable back into your carburetor. You're going to push this lever back here and then you'll be able to put it in. Now all we have to do is reattach our lines to the carburetor. Once again, I'm going to grab my needle nose to stretch out the uh, end of the line so it goes on the nipple easier. I just stretch, turn, stretch. This is the one going from the fuel filter. Once I got it on there, I'm just gonna get it up a little bit more. The next one, I'm gonna stick my needle nose in, stretch, turn, stretch, and replace that one. Now we have our fuel lines installed. And we can put the air filter base back on. All right, we're going to put it back over the choke lever, get it in place. We're going to put our nuts back on with our eight millimeter socket. I'm gonna grab another air filter, a spark plug, throw some gas in it and see if it's gonna fire up. All right, so today we've learned how to change out your carburetor, your fuel lines, your fuel filter, your fuel, your air filter, and your plug. Hopefully that'll get you going. Now let's see if this bad boy's gonna start. All right, get it choked, primed, pull. Popped off, let's roll. Thanks again for tuning in to Chicanic. I hope I save you some time, money, and frustration in the future. If you would, give us a follow on Facebook at facebook.com slash chicanic, and we'll see you next time. Have a great weekend.